In this video, I'll be showing you some of the new features in Frescobaldi 219, which was released a few months ago. And I'll also go over a few of the changes in the Lily Pond community that have happened since my last video. The first thing I'll show you is how to download Frescobaldi. This page may look a bit different than the last time I showed it to you, but it's pretty straightforward. For those of you on a Windows machine, all you have to do is click this link here, and it will bring you to this page, and then choose the .exe file, and then download it and install it as normal. If you're running Linux, things are a bit different, but they're not that bad. All you have to do is download this tar file, and then once you finish that, make sure that you install Python ly as well as Python Poplar Qt. In order to download Python ly, just follow the link and click this green download button. To install Python Poplar Qt, just run this command in your terminal. Now let's move on to the meat and potatoes. A few of the new features in 219 can be found under the Tools menu here. Under Quick Remove, we now have options for removing fingering and comments. Let me show you what that looks like. Here I have a score where there are several comments. Now as your scores get larger, you're going to have more and more comments. But for some reason, if you'd like to clean up the score and remove comments in bulk, this is how you do that. Simply select the area of the score you'd like to have comments removed from and run the command. You'll notice now that there are no comments in the score. This also works for fingerings as well. Also new in Frescobaldi 219, you can use relative mode without a starting pitch being required. Now I'll go into more detail about this in my next video, which talks about MIDI. But for now, just know that when you use the absolute to relative mode conversion, or vice versa, you can specify certain behavior without a starting pitch, which is really cool. You can now have up to 800% zoom in the music view, which really comes in handy when you're doing a lot of tweaks and you need really precise measurements, you can really get in there and see everything. The comment and uncomment snippets have been improved and they're now located in the snippet menu. Let me show you how that works. If you want to make a comment in your score, it's really easy. Just use the percent key and enter your comment. However, if you want to convert a large area of text in your score to a comment, there's an easy way to do that now, by using this snippet. The comment snippet can be found either in the snippets window, which you can dock or float wherever you'd like, or up in the snippets menu here, or by a keyboard shortcut. One other feature that was introduced a while back in 2.18.2 is a more flexible colored HTML export and copy. What this allows you to do is to export your score from Frescobaldi and bring it into a program like LibreOffice or another document. Now Frescobaldi has a new pitch tool, which is Mode Shift. Now this can be used to change all selected notes to conform to a specific mode or scale. Let me show you how that works. In order to use the new mode shift, first we have to tell Frescobaldi what music we'd like to shift. Next, come up to Tools and Pitch. Then select Mode Shift. From this drop-down menu, we have the ability to shift to quite a few different modes. Let's use the mode shift and change these notes to follow the Phrygian mode. How about in the key of B? 
B flat. Look what happens when we hit shift pitches. Our entire score was shifted to B flat Phrygian. Also available in Frescobaldi now is MIDI import. Simply go to File, Import, and choose a MIDI file to import it into Frescobaldi. The last new feature I want to show you in Frescobaldi is that you can now use Control Mouse Wheel to zoom in the log file. Finally, I just want to go over one new thing that's happened in the Lily Pond community since my last video was uploaded. There's now a new bug tracker website at this location, so if you'd like to submit a bug or check out the change log, this is how you do it now. Once you click issues, you can see the entire change log for a Lily Pond. You can even search by version to see what's changed in what new version. You can search issues using keywords here. If you want to see what's been fixed in a particular version, all you have to do is click closed. And then you can search by labels to see what was changed in what version. Clicking on any one of these labels will then bring you to a list that only shows that version of Lily Pond and what was fixed. I'm not sure how long this bug tracker will be on SourceForge, but um, it may be temporary. Maybe it'll be uh, a couple years. I really don't know. But uh, for now, it's a really clean interface with um, you know plenty of functionality, and uh, it's great to see what the community is working on and to watch the progress of Lily Pond. Okay, guys. That's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment for me down below letting me know what you think of my Lily Pond tutorial videos. And if you have a specific Lily Pond question you'd like me to make a video on, please let me know. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. See you next time.